Hey everybody, I'm JJ Johnson. You're watching Reality Survival. And so tonight I just wanted to talk with you about some possible improvised weapons for a non-permissive environment. Obviously, if you could carry a firearm, if it's legal to do so, you should do so. If you can carry a knife, then you should carry a knife. Um, but sometimes there could be situations where you can't take particular things with you. Maybe it's on an aircraft, and I don't know necessarily that all these will work on an aircraft or not, but uh, maybe it's in a, uh, you know, like an excessive rule of law situation where you have uh, heavy police presence and uh, martial law or that kind of thing. Um, you know, on a, on a regional, small scale kind of situation or something. Uh, so anyway, I'm just going to go through these. And the first set, or first thing, is a security umbrella or an umbrella that is really tough. <laughs> um, I just got made aware of these not long ago and uh, the company sent some out for me to take a look at and these things are pretty impressive. Um, they have a, let me see if I can show you this and I'll, I'll show you some footage of it uh, hitting the tactical bob with it here in a minute, but uh, they've got like a carbon fiber uh, shaft and so it's really strong and it's actually a pretty good uh, weapon. Let me see if I can close this up here. Now it has the uh, really hard kind of, you know, pointed end on it, you know, for, for jabbing and that kind of thing. And then you've also got uh, kind of this knob handle on it too, where you could swing it like a baseball bat and really put a hurting on somebody. So this is actually a really cool one that you could probably take anywhere not look out of place, not look, uh, you know, unusual or anything like that by any means, because I mean, unless you're in the desert where, you know, it doesn't rain. But uh, yeah, you could you could take these pretty much anywhere. And they have a shorter version as well. It's the same thing. It's just a little bit shorter version. Also has the knob handle. And then they also have a uh, kind of the hook handle and, you know, almost sort of like a cane. Okay, so for this first item, this is the... Um, uh, the security umbrella and like I said you can really you know you can very effectively use it as a jab you know just jabbing right there right in the center of the chest Boom! and that's gonna be you know really effective you can also just swing it just like a baseball bat you know and just really I mean you can hit hard with this thing and it doesn't do anything to the umbrella at all so that one is a really really good one I think and that kind of leads me into the second one, and that would be an actual cane, um, you know, or a walking stick or something like that. So just imagine that this is a cane, because I don't have a cane yet. <laughs> I'm sure I will before too long. But um, so, you know, those are the first things, a, a good umbrella like this. Um, and I'll put the link to those in the description below or a, a good sturdy cane or walking stick, or something along those lines. Um, the next one would be just a, a good flashlight, um, and I don't mean so that you can use the strobe. The strobe thing, to me, is a myth, and it, it may disorient you a little bit, but it's not going to stop an attacker from getting to you and all that. Um, I believe that that's something that's been <laughs> perpetrated that really isn't as effective as people think it is. But anyway... Um, but one like this, like this Olight M1X that has the, you know, really uh, kind of crenulated be bezel on it where it's kind of made for striking and that kind of thing, you know, that could be a pretty effective tool. And so, you know, that would be another one on the list. All right, with the uh, uh, flashlight, you know, with a crenulated bezel like this, I mean, basically you just come here, boom, you know, right to the face right to the neck and those, you know, soft spots like that. And even if you're doing, you know, blows to the body, having that, having that fist load in there is gonna help quite a bit. Another thing is just, even if you just had a, a regular old EDC flashlight, this is the Olight S2 Baton. This is my everyday carry flashlight. And, you know, you don't have to, you know, necessarily have anything standing out you know too far or anything like that even just a flat one's going to be you know pretty good for for hitting like that but also as just a fist load to hold your fist you know to keep your knuckles from collapsing and you just get a little bit more of a solid punch um, 
and that would be kind of similar as to like a roll of quarters, you know, or something along those lines. Okay, so the next one on the list is um, if you have a good tactical pin, then that might be one. But if you needed something even more low profile than that, then just a regular old pin can actually be pretty effective as a puncture, you know, kind of a puncture device for like the side of the neck, the face, eyes, you know, those kinds of things. Um, and it doesn't have to be anything fancy if you can find like, you know, an all metal um, style or body, then that's going to be the best. Uh, like a mechanical, all metal mechanical pencil or an all metal uh, ink pen, you know, something along those lines. Uh, obviously, if it has the flat back on it, then, you know, like that, then that's going to make it a little bit better for your thumb to rest on and give you a little bit, you know, kind of better penetration and that kind of stuff. Uh, this one is kind of an interesting one. Um, this was just a metal ruler. And all I did is I took and I bent it in half. And you can bend it in half without it breaking. Okay, and so you could just stick that as it is, just without it being broke, just down into you know a, a pocket or something like that, and it wouldn't be any big deal. Then all you got to do is just take and bend it backwards again. It'll break apart, and when it does, these edges are very jagged. And you can take those, take the little cork on the outside, put that in your hand, especially if it's a gloved hand. Even if it's not, though, I was hitting Tactical Bob earlier, and you know you can hit him pretty good, and it, it leaves nice big gouges in the in the rubber, so I'm sure it would do a number on your neck as well. Um, but just having something like that as a striking tool, you know, being able to strike in the, the V's of the neck and down the face and stuff like that could be pretty effective too. And it's pretty low profile and inexpensive as well. Okay, the next one is these, um, just this ruler. And, and you can see just how jagged that those things are. And, you know, you just basically just hold them in your hands like this. And you just be here and just basically just cutting across the jugular or straight down the face. And that's, you know, I don't know if you can tell that or not, but it's, <laughs> it's cutting that up pretty good. So not bad. All right. Another thing is uh, tools, depending on what your job, your profession is, what your cover for action, cover for status is in the environment, what you're doing. You know, a tool like this, this is a little uh, 3 8 um, hex head, extended hex head. Uh, I don't know what the exact name of it is. It's got H5, I guess. Um, and this is a cobalt. And, you know, basically it's, again, another thing that is like a, almost like a Kubaton or something, but it's not obviously a Kubaton. But you can do the same things with it as far as, you know, jabbing into those soft spots, using it for pressure point control tactics and things like that. So, and, and you know, it's going to probably pass any kind of security inspection or anything like that as long as it was logical for you to have it. If you were more of a businessman or something like that, the pins might be more of a thing or maybe the ruler or um, perhaps a carpenter's pencil. You know, a carpenter's pencil sharpened off could be a pretty devastating, you know, kind of weapon, you know, as well. Carpenter pencil here. Yeah, it's getting pretty good penetration just in that rubber there. Imagine if it was your neck, you know, or straight in the eyes, you know, like that, in the gut, and the side of the ribs. Not bad. Uh, obviously, screwdrivers could be uh, also used that way. Um, again, as long as it's logical for you to have it and it's acceptable in that environment. Um, another thing is a pair of uh, scissors. These scissors are actually kind of big to do this, but you could get the smaller all metal ones or whatever, and uh, you know you could be able to grab those and use that as kind of a, a puncture device as well. So um, let's see, and then I've got just another multi-tool here. This is the little Juice CS4. It's my EDC. Also happens to be perfect sized for you know doing a fist load like I was talking about earlier. Obviously, it has a blade on it as well. I'll do a separate video if you guys are interested um, on how to use a folding 
pocket knife for self-defense because it's a little bit of a you know different kind of a technique but anyway um, it definitely can be used so and then the last one is just you know a big old mag light and uh, a mag light can be pretty effective it's obviously you know you can take it wherever if you had it in a backpack or something like that you can just say oh it's just in case I have to walk home at night you know and then obviously you grab it boom and you can use it as a striking device. All right, the old standby, the mag light, <laughs> is gonna work really well. Boom! You can really, right on the forehead, just gonna work very well. So, anyway guys, that's just some, uh, some ideas. Um, I would be curious to see what you guys could add to this list. I know that there are a number of different items that can be used as weapons in a non-permissive environment. So I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments and see you know, what you think would, would make good items that are low profile, that's not gonna necessarily uh, look suspicious if you get stopped and searched and those kinds of things that you could have an easy explanation for. That's kind of the idea behind this, so. Anyhow, uh, like I said, I'll throw some links in the description below for some of these different things. If you guys are interested in looking at them, you can see them on Amazon and, uh, and pick them up there. That definitely helps out our channel a lot. Thank you very much for those people who are doing it because we definitely um, don't make an, anything on YouTube anymore. <laughs> um, a channel my size, you know, you should be able to make a reasonable amount of money, but... Uh, it's, it's hardly enough to cover the dog food bill <laughs> for, uh, for a month. So anyhow, I definitely appreciate it. And let's see, don't forget to live the six Ps. Proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. Stay safe, guys.